In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Christ is in our midst. He was, and is, and ever shall be. Before we begin to look at this parable of Jesus that, he get, that we hear this morning, this parable of the talents, we need to set it straight what exactly a talent is in the context of this, this parable in this scripture here. A talent here is not being able to juggle or being able to sing or being able to play baseball. That's a modern idea of this word talent. In the ancient world, in ancient Greece, during the time of the Bible and much time way before that, a talent was a unit of measurement, especially the measurement of money. A talent was also uh, a measurement of something valuable. So there's, been, there's varying ideas of what a talent weighed, but the one I heard is that a talent weighed about 50 pounds. So you can imagine those big 50-pound sacks of flour that we would have at the, at the festival. Imagine that weight in gold or silver, and then we understand what a talent is. I looked up what a bar of gold weighs. A bar of gold weighs 27 and a half pounds. So if you can imagine a talent of gold was equivalent to about two bars of gold. And I couldn't help myself. I asked uh, what, if this person who received five talents of, say, gold, that would have been 250 pounds of gold, I asked Google how much that would that be worth today. And Google told me it would be worth $5.5 million of gold. So a talent is something very valuable. In the ancient world, it was often considered to be the lifetime wages of a very highly paid worker. One talent. So this is some, a talent is something that is weighty, that is heavy, that is valuable, that is precious, that is something that everybody wants. And in the ancient Hebrew in the, in the eyes of the first century Jews, they would have heard something else when they heard this word talent. And this idea of heaviness. And this idea of preciousness. And they would have thought immediately of this, this Hebrew word kavod. Which in Hebrew, literally speaking, means heaviness. But it also means God's glory. Doxa. So they would have immediately thought something wealthy and abundance of wealth, and they would have immediately in their minds tied it to God's glory. They would have tied this talent idea to the temple. They would have tied this idea of this talent to the Ark of the Covenant. And you've all seen the Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? They have the, the Ark of the Talent, and they have the two... Uh, I guess they're eagles with their, eye, their wings facing inward. And according to the Bible, in the middle of those two wings, that is where God's glory resided. That was where God, when he came down, that is where he resided. In between those two wings, sets of wings on the ark. And what was that seat called? It was called the mercy seat. So again, they would have heard this word talent, they would have thought of God's glory. They would have thought of God's greatness. And they would have attached it instantly to God's mercy. Because when God comes to his people, both in the Old Testament and also today, in, in the incarnation of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, this is mercy. This is grace. This is God sharing himself with us. This is God speaking to us. His words are a treasure. His mercy is a treasure. His grace is a treasure. So we can imagine then, back to this word talent, back to this parable. He gave five talents to one. He gave three talents to another. He gave one talent to another. Even this one talent, then we understand, is very, 
very valuable. This person who received the one talent, why the master gave one five, one three, one one, we don't know. It was according to God's wisdom and God's providence. But that one person who received the one talent by no means was cheated by God. If we look at this with mercy, one received five talents of mercy, one received three talents of mercy, one received one whole lifetime of mercy. Now this parable is not an economic parable. It is not a parable about how to properly engage in venture capitalism. This is a spiritual parable about mercy and about God's grace and how it's a gift lavished upon us generously. And the one thing about mercy, the one thing about mercy is that it only has value, God's mercy only has value in our lives if, yes, we accept His mercy and know that He loves us and and sheds His grace upon us, but it only has value if it is shared. Value that is kept, mercy that is kept to oneself ceases to become mercy, loses its divine purity and its divine attention, and becomes worthless. It becomes worth zero. So this is a spiritual parable about, yes, receiving God's mercy, valuing it, knowing that it's, that it's a treasure, many, many lifetimes worth of treasure. Remember the parable of the 10,000 talents? When the person, that other parable, where the, where the debtor owed 10,000 lifetimes worth of divine grace and God still forgave it? Remember that when we read that in a few weeks. This is a parable of God's mercy. It is a parable of the spiritual life. It is a parable of the gospel. It is a parable about Orthodox Christianity. It is a parable about being rich towards others as God has been rich to us. So how do we spend God's mercy? How do we invest God's mercy? How do we, if we receive five talents of mercy, give God back five talents more? It comes from sharing that mercy. It comes from repenting ourselves, looking at everyone around us and seeing that they also are in need of God's grace and mercy and love, they also need to repent and to keep passing that on. To be wealthy towards God is to forgive everybody else, to give everybody else a break, to get out of everybody else's business, and to love them as God has loved us. Now, so when this talent worth of mercy is spent, when it is given generously out, automatically it increases. Mercy begets mercy. Look at the scripture we read last Sunday of Zacchaeus, the tax collector. God's mercy to Zacchaeus begat more mercy. Zacchaeus was giving everything away. He was repenting. He was giving his money to the poor. He gave back more than what was forgiven him and what he had, what he had taken and stolen. He gave back even more because God forgave him. The problem with the person with the one talent in this parable who went and buried his talent then is not the fact that he, he had this bar of gold and gave the bar of gold back but that he did not receive this grace and mercy correctly because he thought it was all to himself, that God only loved him, it was only about him and God, and he did not go and spend this mercy. Mercy is only valuable if it is spent upon other people, if it is shared, and, and, and mercy is shown to everyone around us. Divine mercy cannot be held as if it is our own possession. It must be shared. It must be given out. This is why we have this devastating moral that Jesus gives here. He says, to the one who has been given more, more will be given, and that person will become wealthy. And the one who has less, even what he has will be taken away. Does that make sense? 
the one who has been given more talents and shares out those talents is trustworthy to be given even more grace and more mercy. The one who is miserly with his forgiveness and miserly with his being merciful isn't worthy of the mercy he's been given and that mercy will be taken away. In closing, let's look at some examples. Two examples. The first example I I just mentioned is Zacchaeus. He is the example of a person who was given one measure of talent, just like the person in the, uh, in the um, parable today. But Zacchaeus made the most of that talent. He received it, and he rejoiced, and he accepted God into his house and into his life, and he repented and gave out all the mercy that God gave him, he gave back to the people. What about an example of people who have received three or five talents and lost it all. We have this example in the next part of chapter 25 that comes right after this parable today. It's the parable of the last judgment that we are going to hear in a few weeks at the beginning of Great Lent. These, remember those, the parable of the last judgment. The God, the, the, there were the, uh, God came in all his glory. He, he divided between the lambs, the sheep, and the goats. Remember this one? Please shake your, your, nod your hand if you know it's for, And the, 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 the division between the two. Those who were the goats, those who were sent off to judgment, were the ones who were, had all these gifts, yet when they came across a poor person, when they came across... Um, a hungry person or a person who was in prison, they did not show that mercy. And when they didn't show the mercy to these people here, it was as if they did not give any kind of return back to God. They just like wanted to give whatever five they gave him and they, they wanted to give it back to God. The sheep, the, the, the lambs who did God's grace, did, gave their, shared their mercy with those around them with the hungry, the naked, those in prison, etc. And they did, it, they did this mercy out of second nature. It says when, when, uh, when the, the master and the king came and they said, you know, blessed are you servants, go into your place of reward. And they said, when did we see you? When did we serve you, Lord? The, the, and, and the Lord said, you served me when you served those who were of, of lower than you, who were hungry, naked, in prison, etc. You see, they, the, the, the lambs had the five talents and they gave back five talents more. The others were given five talents and they were miserly and selfish, self-absorbed, uncaring about other people and what they had were taken away. Let us pray to the Lord, what our mercy. This is an appropriate time. This is the acceptable time, as St. Paul says in the epistle today. This is the time of opportunity that God has given us this great grace, this great mercy, this gift of being in our presence and guiding us and teaching us how to be citizens of paradise. Let us remember all the grace that God has given us and also make it second nature for us that we may be merciful to others as God has been merciful to us.